Today, I'm gonna spend 100 days in Pixelmon, but I can only use Paradox Pokemon. I'm also gonna be playing on the Smash MC server, where they have custom Paradox Pokemon. My goals for the next 100 days is to catch at least 15 Paradox Pokemon, to catch a shiny Paradox Pokemon, and at least one legendary Paradox Pokemon. Can I complete all of these goals and become the ultimate Paradox Pokemon trainer? Watch the rest of the video to find out. Also, if we hit 20,000 subscribers, I'll spend 100 days in Pixelmon as Ash Ketchum. Without further ado, let's start our adventure. I decided to choose Oshawott as my starter, but that won't matter as I'm not allowed to use him anyways, since I'm only allowed to use Paradox Pokemon. That means I'd have to find a way to catch one without using Oshawott at all. So I warped into the wild and checked my battle pass and saw that if I reached level 8, I'd be able to get a special item that would allow me to redeem a Paradox Pokemon of my choice. So there was only one thing left to do, and that is grinding up levels by mining lots of stone and dirt. But hey, we just started our adventure. I'd like to do other things than just mining, such as exploring this huge house, where I had a lot of fun riding the bike indoors, and even managed to find lots of items in these barrels. Finally, once I left the house, I ended up cycling by this shiny orthworm, and I was able to catch it with a great ball, which gave me lots of levels. I also explored some desert ruins, and this one in particular merged with a dungeon, so I ended up getting even more loot. Eventually, on the fifth day, after mining and smelting tons of ores off camera, I finally ended up getting level 8 on the battle pass. I was awarded a specific Pokemon paper, which allowed me to claim any non-legendary Pokemon. In this case, I decided to choose Slitherwing. But now my inventory was getting a bit too cramped, so I decided to gather up lots of materials and start building my house. It took a while, but eventually I finished it. Might not be the best house ever, but it's good enough. Since I'm stuck with Slitherwing for now, I used up the rare candies I got from the battle pass till Slitherwing was level 100. With the help of a random player, I was able to teleport into the Ultra Space Dimension, which is where server-exclusive Paradox Pokémon have a chance at spawning. So I explored for a while, eventually ending up in the Ultra Deep Sea Biome, where I would encounter my first wild Paradox Pokémon, Storm Leviathan. I instantly threw my Ultra Balls at it, and luckily I was able to catch it without any problems. This was one of the most majestic looking Paradox Pokémon I've ever seen. But wait, my luck does not end there is I find myself face to face with a Death Fear, a Paradox Pokemon based off of Dragapult. I tried my best, throwing as many Ultra Balls as I had in my inventory, but sadly, when it defeated my team, I was sent back to the overworld in what appears to be some random guy's base. I literally have no idea as to why I ended up here, but I again used the help of another player to go back into the Ultra Space Dimension, and this time I explored far and wide, until I found yet another Death Fear. I threw Ultra Balls outside of battle so that it wouldn't be able to kill my team, and eventually I was able to catch it. But um, yeah, apparently I found another Death Fear a day later, so I just ended up catching that one, and now I just had two Death Fears. At least I found another Paradox Pokemon that isn't Death Fear. Now I tried my best catching Slashing Shell, but it took every last Ultra Ball in my inventory until I was just left with nothing. Feeling frustrated, I warped back home. But then I decided to warp to the Gym Leaders and have a go trying to get the first Gym Badge. Sadly, I wasn't allowed to bring the custom Paradox Pokemon, so when I sent out Slitherwing all alone, I got destroyed. If I wanted to defeat the gym leaders, I'd need to expand my team, so I warped into the end. In order to hunt down some more Paradox Pokémon, it didn't take too long until an Iron Tread spawned. Now I need to be careful when catching it, because if my Pokéball were to fall in the void with Iron Treads in it, it will disappear. So I tried pushing it onto the platform, even expanding it to make sure it doesn't fall. But Iron Treads just had other plans. There was a sad attempt at saving its life, but it was just too late. 
To prevent this happening again, I continued to expand the platform until I saw that Iron Tread spawned again. I quickly made my way down and caught Iron Treads. As I walked around the end islands, I came across Iron Hands. I used the rare candies I had to lure it onto a wider platform and then caught it with the first Ultra Ball I threw. I also spotted an Iron Moth but before I could react, it just decided to fly away. After walking around a while, I found a wild sandy shox. I tried luring it with rare candies, but it was just not interested. Eventually, it decided not to be a part of this world anymore. Well, that's okay. I flew around with my Storm Leviathan and spotted Iron Thorns on the Outer End Islands. Luckily, this went well, and I was able to catch another Paradox Pokemon. Now that I've expanded my team a bit, I went ahead and challenged the first Gym Leader. Sadly, Death Fear and Storm Leviathan had to sit out as they were banned. Anyways, the Gym Battle wasn't that difficult. Iron Treads was able to defeat all 6 Pokemon by itself, and now I have one Gym Badge. Seeing how easy the first gym was, I challenged a second gym soon after. It actually was a bit more challenging, making me use more than one Pokemon. But in the end, I got my second gym badge. I was pretty happy with the team I had, so why not get them all to level 100? I stayed at the level grinder for a while, but really wasn't making any progress. That's when I had the bright idea to buy lots of rare candies from the GTS, speeding up the leveling process. Also, I thought it was cool that the custom Paradox Pokemon learn custom moves once they reach level 100. The moves weren't super powerful, but still made each Pokemon feel more special and unique. I took my new and improved team and started practicing Pokemon battles with them by destroying all the NPC trainers around spawn. And yes, some of them even had legendary Pokemon, yet I still defeated them with relative ease. Feeling very accomplished today, I went to bed the same night, and when I woke up the next day, Pixelmon had updated to version 9.1.6, adding 3D models for Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. I knew I wanted to hunt them down now, so I warped into the end dimension and started walking around sadly coming across an Iron Jugulus that was flying over the void, making it impossible to catch. I waited around a bit, eventually finding a Fluttermane that I was able to catch, and even spotted a Great Tusk which I added to my collection of Paradox Pokemon. So far, I had 8 in total and no signs of stopping. I got myself a Diamond Pickaxe and enchanted it with Efficiency 3 so that I could mine tons of Endstone and expand the platform allowing more Pokemon to spawn on it. That's when I spotted a Scream Tail down below. I tried my best throwing Pokeballs at it, but the server was experiencing some bad lag. And also, this guy was trying to mine the blocks under Scream Tail so that it would fall into the void. The odds were stacked against me, but I persisted. Eventually, the lag got to the server and it had to restart. And yes, when I joined back, Scream Tail was nowhere to be seen. But Lady Luck decided to bless me on this day as I came across the legendary Paradox Pokemon Walking Wake in all its glory. I used my only Park Ball that I got as a reward from having hours of playtime, and now Walking Wake was mine. I had to use all of my leftover rare candies to get it up a few levels before warping to the level grinder and training it up till it reached level 100. Um, okay, Walking Wake wasn't the only legendary I got. I forgot to press record, and as you can see in chat, I opened an uncommon lucky block which upgraded to a rare lucky block, and uh, yeah, I got a Jirachi now too. I can't use it, but it's still very rare for this to happen in the first place. Anyways, moving on, I warped back to the gym leaders and challenged the third one which specialized in ground types. For some reason, I was allowed to bring along the custom Paradox Pokemon, and needless to say, it only took one Death Fear to completely annihilate this gym, awarding myself the third gym badge. Now I tried to challenge the fourth gym leader, but their water type Pokemon were just too strong against my own team, so I ended up losing. I knew if I wanted to have a chance at it again, I'd need to get stronger Paradox Pokemon. So with the help of a kind player, I warped back into the Ultra Space Dimension, where I was spotted by another player who dropped me a Master Ball and wished me luck, but also mentioned that there was a Paradox Deoxys known as Cosmic Virus that existed on the server. I was very interested and decided before the 100 days was over, I wanted to catch this special Paradox Pokemon. 
but of course my luck works in mysterious ways, as I find a buzz wall instead. I caught it with a level ball, but sadly could not use it, as it is an Ultra Beast. I explored far and wide in the Ultra Space Dimension, even beating a raid, until I finally found another custom Paradox Pokemon. This one was called Iron Wings, and is a future form of Charizard. It took a lot of level balls since I ran out of Ultra Balls, but I was able to catch it. I thought I'd check up on the end and see if there were any Pokemon here. Well, it didn't take too long, and suddenly there were tons of Paradox Pokemon around me. A roaring moon trying to fly away, an iron jugulus already in the air, and suddenly a scream tail isolated on a platform. I chose to go after Roaring Moon since it rarely spawns compared to the other two, and let me just tell you, it did not want to get caught. I literally had to buy a stack of Ultra Balls just because I used the rest on it already, and not to mention that it also wiped out my entire team so I could only throw Pokeballs at it. Try not to let it fly away too far. At long last, I was able to catch Roaring Moon, and when I checked back at the platform, the other two Paradox Pokemon weren't here anymore. Or so I thought, until I saw an Iron Jugglist spawn soon after, and started chasing it down with my Storm Leviathan. One thing led to another, and I soon <laughs> fell to my death. I was able to warp back and saw Sandy Shocks on the platform, alongside another Slitherwing. Thankfully this one wasn't too much of a hassle, and now I finally had 12 Paradox Pokemon in total. I spotted a specific shiny paper on GTS, a special item that allows you to redeem any Pokemon, and it will be a shiny. I knew this is what I needed to get a shiny Paradox Pokemon, so I warped into the boss tower, beating up lots of boss Pokemon, and taking their drops to sell them to the Pokemart for money, until I was able to buy the specific shiny paper. I tried to redeem Iron Leaves, but sadly it counted as a legendary Pokemon, so instead I chose to redeem a shiny Iron Moth, since the last one I saw flew away from me. When I was back home, I saw a wormhole appear right on top of my house. So when I go back into the Ultra Space Dimension, here I found these huge pipe structures that had beast ball loot and even chests with rare items. So I explored the sewers finding more rare items, to the point where I was selling most of it and got lots of money in return, of course keeping the plates in case of Arceus. I happened to stumble upon yet another Storm Leviathan in the Ultra Space, which I easily caught with an Ultra Ball. Now I was running around in hopes of finding more Paradox Pokemon, but instead I found a shiny Trap Pinch which looked really cool. But as I was exploring, I would collect these Beast Ball loots every now and then, and occasionally I'd have a full inventory and sell a loot back at the Pokemart for more money. I realized I earned enough to buy a specific Pokemon paper off the GTS once again, and I used it to claim a custom Paradox Pokemon, but sadly it did not work. Eventually I decided to redeem Iron Jugulus because it just kept on flying away from me whenever I tried to catch it. Now I only needed to catch one more Paradox Pokemon to finish all of my goals. So I knew I had a lot of time to kill, and tried to re-challenge the 4th Gym Leader, but apparently he wasn't here. Actually, all the Gym Leaders disappeared. I wasn't sure on what to do instead, so I warped to the Battle Tower and decided to challenge the trainers there. Surprisingly, I managed to scrape by the first battle on half health on my last Pokemon, even took down a Kyurem and won my second battle until I was defeated by the third trainer who had both a Zerkatree and a Tornadus on his team. I knew I wanted to hunt down Cosmic Virus as my last Paradox Pokemon, but before I did that, I wanted to explore the overworld a bit and even discovered a Team Galactic base. Here I found the leader of Team Galactic, Cyrus, who was guarding the Ark Chalice. I decided to battle him and realized his Pokemon were all level 120. Even so, I was still able to defeat half of his team until he sent out Dialga which destroyed my entire team. I finally thought it was time to go back into the Ultra Space Dimension and was warped here by some nice people. Although I walked around for a while, this crazy guy somehow found me and wanted to take a screeny. Once I took one with him, I whipped out my bike and cycled as fast as I could trying to get away from the stalker. Thankfully, I lost him, but now it was time to find Cosmic Virus. I flew around with Storm Leviathan and explored on foot, but yet still did not find anything. I knew Cosmic Virus would take a while to find, so just to make sure I don't truly fail this challenge, I set out to catch yet another unique Paradox Pokemon, just in case Cosmic Virus doesn't spawn in time. Most of the Pokemon I saw, however, were all Paradox Pokemon I've already caught before, until I found this Iron Bundle. 
I bought a super rod and thought it would be a great idea to rod it onto the main island so that it wouldn't walk off. But I may or may not have overestimated how strong the rod was and accidentally dropped Iron Bundle into the void. Feeling defeated, I went back into Ultra Space and just started running around aimlessly, making sure to pick up Beast Ball loot on the way until yet another Death Fear spawned. Catching this meant I had three Death Fears already. Finally, I found a Slashing Shell, a custom past paradox form of Blastoise. While I was trying to catch it, another one spawned right next to me, so I kind of just kept on throwing Ultra Balls at both of them, hoping one of them would be caught. Somehow the other disappeared, so I focused and caught the other Slashing Shell, meaning I had caught 15 Paradox Pokemon in total now. But wait, the adventure was not over yet. I still wanted to find Cosmic Virus, and when I went home to store my rare items, I realized I had 11 type plates already. So I went back into the Ultra Space, collecting loot within the sewers, making sure I collect all there is to find, and selling spare items at the Pokemart. Doing this earned me enough money to buy two Park Balls from the GTS. For the next few days, I got really unlucky. I did not find Cosmic Virus anywhere, but that didn't stop me from collecting loot on my travels. In the end, I managed to score all the type plates needed to summon Arceus. Now it was time to place all the plates into the Arc Chalice and receive the Azure Flute. I took the flute and played it by the time space altar it spawned, but sadly it did not react. There must have been some kind of glitch with this altar, so I knew I needed to find one elsewhere. So I kid you not, I was flying to the galactic base cause they had an arc chalice so I just assumed they might have one nearby, until I flew over a time space altar in the middle of the desert. The fact that I would even find this randomly in just a couple of minutes was incredible, but now it was time to finally summon Arceus. I right clicked the shrine a lot until it finally took my Zur flute and out came the god of all Pokemon, Arceus. I caught it with the park ball I bought earlier, and now I just had Arceus in my PC box that I can't really use. As soon as it became day 91, I knew I had to be serious and track down Cosmic Virus, but I also ended up buying Iron Blaster, a future form of Blastoise, just because it looked super cool. Anyways, there was no time to waste. I went back to the Ultra Space and flew around for a while, until I flew past this weird structure on the ground. I took a closer look and saw the very obvious misplaced block in the middle. So I broke it and that ended up revealing a chest which contained a set of coordinates surrounded by blocks of obsidian. I wasn't sure what this was telling me, but after I found a flint and steel hidden behind the middle pillar, I knew that I needed to travel to these coordinates in the nether. So I used the obsidian in the chest to make myself a nether portal. And now that I was in the nether, I just took out the coordinates and followed them. These coordinates eventually led me to a bastion. I was kind of confused, so I read the coordinates again and realized I was following the map on the top right, which was in XZY, when coordinates in Minecraft usually are in XYZ. However, on the off chance that these coordinates were written in the top right map in mind, I decided to just go up and check to see in case there was really something here. This involved me using a glitch to get on top of the nether roof and building up on these exact coordinates. As I was building up, I saw a shadow in the sky. That's when I realized I'm in the right place and eventually found a chest up here. Opening up the chest revealed a new set of coordinates and an ultra ruin key. I knew I had to travel into the ultra space dimension to find whatever this key led to. So I flew over 10,000 blocks with Storm Leviathan until I finally found some sort of shrine on these exact coordinates. Once I right clicked the shrine, a cosmic virus appeared in front of me and started flying away in hopes to escape. Luckily, I backed it into a corner and was able to catch it with a park ball. And now, I finally had cosmic virus. I took all the rare candies I had and leveled it up to level 100, unlocking the move Venomous Guillotine. I quickly took it out for a test battle until it was immediately defeated by a level 80 Dragonite. As cool as it looks, it really wasn't as strong as I'd imagine. But hey, at the very least, I could fly on its back, and that was pretty awesome. Just before we finish things off, I bought both a Brute Bonnet and a Shiny Iron Valiant. Well, that's everything I did in 100 days of using nothing but Paradox Pokemon. If you want to watch more of these videos, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye!